Hey, and welcome to Need to Make It, I'm Mike. TPU is quickly becoming one of my favorite filaments to print with because it's kind of in a category of its own. You can print bumpers, you can print these replacement parts for clamps, phone cases, drone camera holders, anything that needs some flex or even some protection. But what about replacement belts? Well, not that belt. I mean this belt. In this video, we're going to attempt to design and print a replacement flat belt for a metal lathe and see if it works at all. And if it works, will it work better than the original leather version? Stick around to find out. These flat belts were made from certain cuts of leather which were not prone to stretching, and leather belts are still a popular choice today. But newer belts have layers of leather and a nylon core as well, which helps to resist stretch even more, and that extends their life. More tension can also be applied to the belts so that they can pull the pulleys a little bit better. The problem with leather is that it still doesn't work that well on these small pulleys because the belt, even for the small metal lathe, is more than five millimeters thick, so it cannot come around the curve very easily. For the best grip, leather also requires the sticky crayon to be applied. And for my belt, it is just about at the end of its lifespan because I've already fixed it once by splicing the joint and gluing it back together. So I think it's time for a replacement belt and TPU came to my mind because it's flexible, but not too flexible and it's also extremely durable. Before we go too far and print an entire belt, I have a few concerns with this material. And one is that it seems a little bit slippery, at least that's how it feels as it comes off of the spool. The other is that I don't know if TPU will stretch over time. And if it does, will it go back to its original shape if it's stretched? My lathe is equipped with a mechanism to release the belt tension to avoid stretching the leather, but it would be nice not to have to use it. This is what my original belt looks like, and it has this metal belt lacing, which makes for a somewhat satisfying clicking noise. But for the sake of this video, I'd like to just 3D print this as an entire part, so we won't have that sound. Each of these pulleys are dome-shaped, and that helps to automatically track the belts to the center but I wanted to see if we could maybe take advantage of that shape and also shape the belt to match that profile. Here's a quick sketch of what we're trying to get to. Now it would be ideal to print this as a completely closed band, but I don't want to take the headstock apart on this lathe yet. On this side, I have the section view and the idea here is to try and match that shape of each of the step pulleys. So I have a little bit of a curvature there. It's gonna be 25 millimeters in width and it's gonna be around three millimeters or maybe a little bit less in the thickness of the belt. To join the belt together, I have a scarf joint of some type and over here on the build plate, in order to get something that's long enough, I'm gonna have it sitting on the build plate as a spiral. Let's jump into Fusion 360 and see what we can come up with. Now this is the build plate size for my Q1 printer for reference, which is what I would like to use to do this print. I've played around with a few ideas and I settled on probably the simplest and easiest to print and that is just the elongated connection. It's kind of like a scarf joint and I'm gonna be using leather working faux sinew to connect the two ends together. This is something that I've done before with a leather belt but I haven't done it with a TPU belt of course. But if all of this works well, we can always work on a better way to connect the ends together. Or just print it as a continuous loop and avoid the problem. I've added the tread pattern into the part as well, which should help a little bit with cooling, but it may also help a little bit with the grip. I had planned on printing this on my GDQ1 Pro, but as you can see, I've taken it apart to see how they were able to make the frame so stiff. So I'll be printing the belt on the Bamboo X1C instead. And this is just ordinary 95A TPU, and I'm gonna be doing some testing soon on the high flow stuff because this is a very slow print at six and a half hours. Now I didn't want this belt to be too thick because I wanted it to be able to flex when it was coming around the smallest pulleys. So it's only two and a half millimeters thick at the outer edges and two millimeters at the center. And we're also cutting into that belt by half a millimeter for the tread pattern. And I put glue stick on just so it would remove a bit easier and it does. Nice, wow, that actually Oh, there's a little bit of stretch to it. Now we just need to add some holes. I'm gonna be drilling them out for this test. And the reason I went with a scarf joint here is because it's gonna allow me to get a little bit more stitching in there and it's gonna end up with a little bit smoother transition than we would have if we had a straight cut end. OK, 
Okay, so we have slow speed. Works fine. Medium speed. And there was a little bit of slippage at the medium speed, just at the beginning, and then high speed. And as soon as I start cutting with anything, the belt just starts to slip. So before I can do anything with the other belt, I need to clean all of this residue off of here, this wax material. Okay, so both sets of step pulleys are pretty clean. Well, that's some of the worst work that I think I've ever done. <laughs> this looks absolutely terrible. I'm just going to trim all of this excess off and then we'll run a test. It's not quite tight enough. Okay, let's try it. belt is not warm at all. It's quite cool. So I would say that it's not quite grippy enough and I'm going to apply some of that same material that I was using for the leather belt and see if that helps at all. This material just isn't quite rubbery enough. Well, I have to admit the reality of the situation and that is that this material does not work well as a drive belt. And it really comes down to the, the properties of the material. This is far too slick. It's nothing like rubber, and it's nothing like the tackiness that you would get with a leather belt. This is very much like rubber on the surface of that belt. I have the ends of these clamped. I just wanted to do a quick comparison between the leather and this TPU belt for the amount of friction or resistance that it would have in order to drive those pulleys. So I have here on the TPU, it feels pretty slick, and on the leather, a lot more resistance, a lot more friction. It's not slippery, but it's also not grippy, if that makes any sense. I have a little bit of a test set up to answer one of the questions that we had earlier. So here I have the TPU belt. What I'm going to do, I have it clamped at one end already. This is one of my heaviest duty clamps, so there's a lot of force coming down on here. And at the other end, with the vise on it, I'm going to put a clamp on the vise. And now I can make a mark over here. Forty two inches. And what I'll do now is I will stretch this using the vise in reverse. So we are at forty three inches to the line. I've stretched it by an inch and twenty five millimeters. So I'm going to leave this for a little bit, maybe a few hours. We'll come back and see what it looks like. It has been around six hours. So I'm gonna release the vise and we'll just see what happens. Does it return? Forty-two and a half inches. Yep, forty-two and a half inches. So we gained a half an inch. 
Maybe I'll leave this for a little bit longer just to see if it returns a bit more to its original size. It's the next day and around 10 hours has passed. So let's see if this has gone back to its original shape. We have 42 and 3 16 So it's made quite a bit of progress. Unfortunately, it did not make it all the way back to 42 inches. So for that reason as well, it cannot be used as a belt for my lathe. We need to find a way to either laminate another material to this or put something into it like the steel cabling that you'd see in a car tire, for example. So now we have both the material being too slick and it stretches and does not return to its original shape. Both are good reasons why this cannot be used as a lathe belt. In a pinch, yeah, you could probably use this, but it isn't right and it's not gonna work long-term. That said, there is no reason we can't use TPU for something else. And one of my patrons had the idea to create TPU vice jaws, so that is exactly what I'm gonna do. And I also wanted to try the hexagon pattern instead of a traditional diamond pattern, which is just really for the coolness factor. I don't think it's gonna do any better at gripping. Now, if you look closely, there are these slots in here, and those are supposed to allow for a thin magnet which is one and a half millimeters by 15 millimeters to be inserted. Hopefully it does the job. Once it goes past a certain point, it should want to go in and sit down. Yep, perfect. Cool. So I need to make one more. Now the magnets aren't super strong, but they're, they're probably strong enough to do the job. I printed a second jaw from TPU and I also printed this. I'll show you that in just a minute. This one is slightly different than the original. I've got these locking bars on each side just so it can position it from sliding side to side. Yeah, nice. Definitely needs those wings to each side because it's just slipping side to side. That's a little bit annoying. This one does not do that. So in a previous video, I showed off these quick grip clamp pads. I have both the taller one, this was for the cast iron to go up underneath and the regular size one as well. But what I didn't have was ones for my larger quick grip clamps. I don't have as many of these clamps, but I am missing one of them and they get damaged as well over time. So I just reproduced one with the exact same design details as the smaller one. I have not tested this yet, so hopefully it fits. Yeah. These are a little bit thicker than the original. They also have the knurling on the surface, the pattern surface there for a little bit better grip. If you'd like to print these yourself, I will have a link on Maker World for both the small, the tall, and the larger clamp version as well. Probably not a tall version because it's not needed for these particular clamps. And if you'd like to print these yourself, I'm gonna have a link for the five inch. I'm gonna have a four inch and a three and a half inch available as well of these soft jaws. Unfortunately, not a success for the belt, at least not with my design. But if you have some ideas on how to improve it or have different types of TPU that you'd like to see printed into a belt, let me know and I'd be happy to revisit this again. But TPU does make excellent clamp jaws, whether it's for soft jaws for a vise or replacement pads for clamps, which provide a bit of grip, but also prevent damage on whatever you're trying to clamp. And it's also great for 3D printing RC car bumpers. All of the successful models shown in this video are available for you to download for free on Maker World and this bumper for a Tamiya TT01 or TT02 chassis. And if you have some other ideas of good uses for TPU that you'd like to see designed and tested, make sure to let me know. Thanks to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And if you would like to help support this channel as well, there is a link down there below.
Take care, everybody. We will see you on the next one.